Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm recording this video because lately a lot of people on my channel have been asking how I actually set up my, uh, my Steam Deck to play pretty much every first-person shooter with great accuracy, far more than you can usually reach on such a small handheld, especially if you're playing a game that doesn't support aim assist, which I guess there are a lot of because on the Steam Deck you can play virtually any um, PC game that's out there. And I like playing these older boomer shooters or just lightweight shooters, even if they're more recent, um, on the Steam Deck. And I think I found a way to make, uh, to make like aiming a breeze on such a small device using very traditional controls, but also utilizing the gyro. So I'm going to go over my settings. Uh, what I'm about to go through is completely unscripted. So my uh, explanations might be a little bit long-winded sometimes, please bear with me. Uh, but what you will learn here uh, will not only apply to the Steam Deck, but can apply to anyone who wants to play PC games using a controller and Steam. Uh, because if you have a motion-based controller like a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, or the DualShock 4 controller for the PS4, or the Switch Pro controller, any controller that has gyro-based motion controls will benefit from what I'm about to explain to you. And I've, like I said, I've tried to find a way to make my controls as traditional as possible while also leveraging gyro and to make aiming extremely fast and easy. So I'm actually going to be using uh, Doom 2 running in GZ Doom uh, with a mod, but it won't affect the settings that I'm about to show. Um, to demonstrate how this works, but this is actually applicable to pretty much any first-person shooter out there. So actually, first I'm going to go through the game settings itself, because uh, initially if you prep for uh, controller and gyro sensitivity, um, you have to first take some steps in the game itself. It's not very complicated. First you have to make sure that your, um, uh, your sensitivity is relatively low, so making it in the lower 10 to 20% bracket of the maximum uh, possible sensitivity in the game because you're going to be controlling the sensitivity of the uh, of the input actually mostly through steam input now one thing i should note here for whatever reason uh the vertical sensitivity in gz doom is actually at least it's, to me it seems to be twice as fast as the horizontal sensitivity if i set it both to one so in order to make it feel one to one i actually have to set the vertical sensitivity to 0.5 which is half i don't know why that is but it's uh, the case in GZ, GZ Doom. This will not be necessary in any other shooter that you play as far as I'm aware. But just so you know, my vertical sensitivity is set to 5.5 so that it actually feels like it's 1.0, just like the horizontal sensitivity. Um, in terms of sensitivity settings, if you have raw input as a separate setting in the menu, please select that as well. Even if you're not playing on a Steam Deck and just with a mouse and keyboard, <laughs> raw input is always preferable. You don't want to have any filtering of the mouse input um, in your game. Moving to Steam input now. Uh, button layout, that's up to your preference. You can check what I've set, how I've set it up here, but uh, it's not necessary for what I'm about to explain. I will be focusing mostly on the gyro and the right stick sensitivity controls. I think I'm going to start with the gyro now. Um, first things first, your gyro and right stick behavior will both be set to as mouse. So once you've set that to as mouse, um, the first thing you have to change is to set the gyro enable button to um, you set the gyro enable button to always on. By default, it's set to like right stick input, meaning that it will only respond or only be enabled once you, when you're using right stick. I don't know why Steam did this or why Valve decided to, decided to do it this way. They don't do it on the, um, the PC or desktop version of Steam like this, but doesn't matter. Just set it to always on. Uh, sensitivity here is set to 240. This is, it really depends on the game. Um, what I like to do is I want to find the sensitivity from my gyro where if I turn my Steam Deck 180 degrees, best thing to do to test this is to sit in a desk chair straight up, sit face a wall, in front of you and make a 180 degree with your chair while you hold the Steam Deck completely still. And by making that 180 turn, not moving it like this, just holding it, my character in the game is supposed to turn twice in the game world. Um, I can roughly demonstrate it here, but it's not going to be perfectly accurate. One turn, twice. It's, it's going to overshoot a little bit, that's okay. 
Um, the most accurate way to test it is to hold the Steam Deck in your hands, I've found. But yeah, it's roughly 180 degree turn of the Steam Deck is two turns in the game. This is to preference, by the way. I like it that fast. It might be a little bit too fast for your taste. You can turn the sensitivity in Steam input down to half of that because if you have the sensitivity uh, in the settings, obviously it's gonna be half as sensitive in the game. So uh, in this case, that would mean that we would, if I wanna turn only once, if I do 180 turn in real life, I would set this to 120. Now, I have the vertical scale sensitivity set to 50 here as well. Um, what that means is that looking up and down with the gyro is half as fast as looking left and right. That's just preference. Once again, this is not something, a lot of people actually prefer their gyro to be like mouse and keyboard input to, for it to be one to one, like uh, the ratio is the same between up and down. Uh, I used to have that way. I actually like it when it's a little bit slower, up and down, then left and right, because you don't have to look up and down as much uh, than left and right in most shooters. So. This is to preference, you could also keep that at 100. Another uh, setting that I uh, enable for the gyro is, let me find it. Yeah, trigger press mouse dampening. Uh, I have it set so that whatever the left trigger is pressed, either softly or, or fully, uh, it dampens the amount of input by a little bit over half. What that does is that when the trigger is pressed while in the game, uh, when I hold this trigger pressed, the gyro becomes way less sensitive. Um, it's essentially a fake ADS function that I've built into the game like this. I like it, it makes my aim a little bit uh, slower and I can like acquire target targets at a distance. I've also made it so that when I hold the trigger pressed, my character, it's also activating the walk button, meaning that my character is actually slower. It really gets, gives you that sort of um, more modern shooter feel. Again, this is to preference. I like it that it's there, uh, although I don't use it so much in the sort of boomer shooter games. But that's, again, this is something that you can, you know, that's the nice thing about Steam Input. This is the kind of stuff that you can tweak to your heart's content, even if the game itself doesn't have any, um, uh, you know, functions like this built into the game. Okay, let's move on to the settings for the actual joystick. So for the right joystick, again, I'm using mouse sensitivity here. This is to preference. Um, I count to three. When I reach three, my character should have turned around uh, 360 degrees, roughly. Again, this is to preference. You can make it lower, you can make it faster. Vertical scale, again, I've made it so that uh, looking up and down is uh, half as fast as looking left and right. My response curve is set to wide. Um, this is again to preference. I used to be a linear player in Apex Legends, but that was all before I ever played with the gyro. I, I've noticed that I don't like linear as much now that I have a gyro that can sort of do a lot of the, the precision aiming by itself, or at least not by itself. I'm still doing the aiming obviously, but I don't have to have that instantaneous response from my thumbstick now that I have the gyro to take care of that. I like it either relaxed or wide. Again, your preference may vary, um, so you don't have to copy this necessarily, but I do think it's a good starting point. So my dead zones are rather low. I do want it to be very uh, responsive. So uh, again, you don't have to copy these exactly, but like see how far you can push them before you get drift. And uh, yeah, because you, your, your thumbstick should still be very responsive. One thing I should mention, to accompany the ADS feature that I just mentioned, I also have it so that um, I have an action set that gets triggered as soon as I hold the left trigger pressed. Um, that makes it so the, the right joystick's sensitivity goes down by quite a lot. It goes from 400 to 140, um, so that uh, looking around with the right stick also becomes slower, um, as does my gyro. Again, sort of mimicking that ADS speed. This again is to preference. Uh, my ADS tends to be much slower than my regular um, turning speeds, but some people actually like it only marginally slower, say by 25 or 50 percent. So this is this is something you um, you can tweak yourself. So all you have to do is create an action uh, layer uh, and then change the sensitivity. And then go you go to your actual default uh, layout settings and on the trigger. I can show you here, you make it so that you hold 
action set layer ADS for both full pull and soft pull of the trigger, meaning that no matter what, how hard or soft you pull the trigger, it will always activate. Um, yeah, and as soon as you let it go, it will stop working and it will go back to the regular sensitivity. So what does this actually mean in the end? Well, it makes it so that the game actually feels extremely responsive, like it feels really fluid, but you also have like your tra traditional controls that you may have been used to from playing games like Call of Duty or Apex Legends. Um, you know, if you come from console, uh, it might feel a little bit frustrating that you can't be so accurate as you're, you, you might be used to, especially in these older games or games that don't have aim assist. Well, this is exactly what gyro is for. Because I'm just going to try and demonstrate. I might be a little bit rusty right now because I haven't warmed up, but um, I have aim assist or any auto aim that the game supports completely disabled. All the aiming you see is done by me. I'm not going to win any awards or break any records or you know beat any pros on a beefed up PC. But I'm sure you will find that the aim is actually much better than you would expect from you know what you would be reasonably capable of of um, you know using a uh, using a Steam Deck. Um, I've noticed, by the way, that people also like using the uh, the trackpads for sensitivity, for example, for for looking around. At, that is, uh, I don't like it myself, but I think it doesn't actually impede on anything I've explained as far as the gyro um, benefit goes. So I think if you're comfortable with using the trackpad for looking around already, uh, just keep using that. Just ignore what I just explained about the right stick. Um, but uh, yeah, I would still, if you're not using gyro just yet, I would basically suggest that you add my gyro settings to whatever setup you have with the trackpads already. So here we go. It's so much easier to sort of micro adjust uh, with the gyro. So I'm doing like the, the, the very blunt aiming is still like turning around is being, being done with the right stick just like what we're used to uh, playing any type of first person shooter. And it's kind of crazy because if you haven't ever played with a gyro on any, uh, oh, I forgot the body armor right there. That's okay. Um, if you've played uh, first-person shooters, um, if you've never played any first-person shooters with uh, with motion controls, um, you know it might seem like motion controls are like a gimmick that people used to play on the, like the Wii with. Uh, you know, your grandma might might have liked it to do some tennis, but. You know, I've been using gyro on both the Steam Deck and, well, for longer on my uh, PC with a controller for about a year now, and it's really been a huge game changer for me. I can never go back to uh, shooters on a controller that don't have gyro support, and, you know, it's kind of crazy to me to think that there's an entire, entirely new console generation out there that doesn't even support gyro at all, which is the, the Xbox platform. Uh, Microsoft doesn't seem interested in supporting motion controls whatsoever. Probably because they also think it's just a gimmick from uh, from 10, 15 years ago. But it's really, it's really, as you can tell, it's actually so easy to utilize. And you don't have to relearn the way you do things. Like, I'm playing the way I already played on the original Xbox, Halo 1, Halo 2. It's just that instead of aim assist, like, compensating for the, you know, the, the, the lack of precision aiming with a controller, I'm still doing this all myself and I didn't have to like train for months or weeks. I was used to this setup for about, uh, you know, within an hour or two after setting it up the first time. And I'm hoping because, you know, I did a lot of the tinkering, a lot of the prep for this, that whoever ends up copying my settings will have an easier time getting used to it, like even faster. So yeah, I can highly recommend trying this out because it's, man, it's, it makes such a huge difference. I've never really liked playing mouse and keyboard. I'm not bad at it, I'm not great at it, but it's just not a posture that I really enjoy. I think controllers are, by and large, just more comfortable to hold. It's just a bit, bit more of a relaxed stance, if you will, like posture. And, um, you know, being able to play shooters like competently on such a small device, uh, but just leveraging like the, the motion controls in a very subtle way, is, uh, it's, just, it's just extremely helpful. Um, there's another uh, input method that you might have seen called Flickstick, which is, I think, quite revolutionary in its concept. Um, I am too, um, you know, far gone in my, my ways of being a traditional controller player uh, to, still, to still get into that. But I, I think there's a lot of, if you're a young gamer and you haven't really, you know, you, you have a lot of plasticity in your brain to learn new things. Um, 
Flickstick basically does away with like any input for uh, for like traditional turns uh, with the right stick, and you do all the aiming with the gyro. And the flick stick part is just if I if I were to flick this thing backwards, it would instantly turn my character 180 degrees. That's why it's called flick stick. Uh, it has a lot of potential. I've seen some people like being super good at it, but I think it's really inaccessible for people who are very well trained in um, in traditional input. And that's why I'm making this video because. I think you don't have to completely unlearn what you've learned when it comes to um, you know, using the camera in a first person shooter, using a controller, in order to be effective with gyro. Like, I, like, you know, like I'm demonstrating here, I can be effective by basically playing with a layout that is you know, no different from what I'm used to on traditional shooters from the last 20 years on a controller. It's just that I've added the gyro there to, you know, to, to give me that extra help to be, uh, to be effective uh, in aiming. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess this is kind of it. Um, again, like the layout uh, that I'm using here is really to preference uh, when it comes to the actual button mappings. Um, but I think the most important part of this is the gyro and its utilization. Um, I would, I, I cannot imagine playing any game anymore, especially in the Steam Deck that doesn't have gyro enabled in order to help me aim. So I highly recommend you check this out. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see if I can help you out. And uh, yeah, good luck and have fun.